It's been said he is one of the most compelling actors of his generation, and he is, that you don't look at anyone else when Leonardo DiCaprio is on the screen. He is now starring in his fourth movie for director Martin Scorsese, the gripping psychological suspense thriller. It's called Shutter Island. Critics are calling it Leo's finest hour, and I would have to agree with you. It's so good to, to finally meet you after all this you time. You too. Thank you. Great to meet you it, as well. It is powerful. It is something that um, thought-provoking. It's just one of those roles that, do, do you seek out these types of roles? Uh, I do seek them out quite aggressively, actually, yeah. but it is a gift when they present themselves to you like this. This really came out of nowhere. I think uh, Scorsese and I at the time were looking at doing a different project mm -hmm. that fell through and this kind of landed in our lap. And it was, uh, you know, it was a mixture of different genres. It was a psychological thriller. Mm -hmm. It was uh, gothic horror. It was a uh, Hitchcockian style of... Uh, well put. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you know, at the end of the day, what it became about was a character piece and that all at the at the end of this movie you're left with one man alone in a room coming to terms with his past with his with his um, with his past traumas and that's what made it riveting to me and it also made the person who's watching it look within themselves mm -hmm. and wonder okay are there some things that have happened in my life that could be used against me or could be said you know this is when you lost it Robin because you know after Hurricane Katrina and the, these mm -hmm. things that mm -hmm. really make you think you talk about uh, Marty and you two are magic Thank you're you. magic on the screen and you could tell his work when you're watching this do you know when uh, when he is really pleased with you and it's been a mutual admiration society between you two spoke you've spoken highly of each other can you tell it when he knows that you've really hit it and can you tell it when he's like ah you didn't quite hit the mark on something you know it's been an interesting process working with him over the years because obviously he to me is the definitive filmmaker of our time mm. and he's influenced me ever since I was 14 and my entire generation and generations before me but what I've discovered m most about him through working with him for 10 years now is that since that uh, great relationship that he's had with De Niro, mm -hmm. and they've produced some of the greatest works of art that, uh, in, mo in movie history, he really trusts his actors. He trusts his actors to come on set, uh -huh. be prepared, and take ownership of their character. And I think he ultimately finds the narrative of mm. the emotion of the film through his actors, and he, he lets you do what you want. It's a, it, people oftentimes think of him as possibly uh, a controlling director, maybe because of how specific his vision is. But when it comes to the actors, whether you're a day player or whether you're in every scene of the movie, he, he, he expects you to have ownership of that character and guide him. You take ownership of this character. And I want to play a clip and tell people it's set in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. You're a U.S. Marshal. Mm -hmm. You've been asked to investigate, go to this island, a mental institution, criminally insane are there. Mm -hmm. Somebody has, has gotten loose and you've been asked to go and, and try and find this person and you actually interview some mm. of the inmates. Yes. Here it is, Shutter Island. You tore her face off, didn't you? Congratulations, no more normal for her, not ever again, no. Do you know what she was afraid of? You. Could you stop that? Please? Stop that! Please! Stop! Do you know a patient named Andrew Latis? Do you? Mm, there's just so many twists and turns, and friends and I say we have to go back and see it again because we weren't quite sure that we, that we missed some things. But also, very physical. Very, it seems like very physically and emotionally draining being a part of this movie. And we have some video of the, the rain and the wind that was used to try and get you into the <laughs> mood, into the character. How, how physical was it for you? It was physically challenging. Uh, you know, more so, I, I would say, the emotion of the, of the character. Mm. It is, the whole movie is a series of short stories, in my opinion, whether it be dream, truth, or fiction, or his, his real past that he's coming to terms with. They're like these tiny little segments, and each one of these segments mm -hmm. we found we had to ke keep pushing further and further emotionally. And that was the real challenge of it. I mean, oftentimes I'd come onto set and there'd be a scene that was condensed into half a page. And then I'd be talking to Scorsese and say, well, this could be the most important mm -hmm. scene in the movie. And there were like a dozen of those. If these things, these segments didn't work uh -huh. and if we didn't sort of push them to their extremes, 
uh, I think ultimately um, you wouldn't have compassion for the character and the no matter what genre it is no matter how great stylistically it was sure you know uh, you wouldn't be connected with this man's journey and this is it's a pretty powerful story I have to say amongst as far as the scripts that I get mm -hmm. and I've seen in my lifetime this is You've this is one of the this is one of the better ones I want to I want to share in the commercial break the scene that I thought was the one. I know that there are all these little short stories, but I don't want to give away too much to, to the viewers at home. I remember a couple of years ago, you were on Oprah, mm -hmm. and you said, hey, when I hit 35, that's when I'm, you know, I got to grow up when I'm, when I'm mm -hmm. 35 years old. You said that a few years ago. You're 35. Ah, give me another 10 years. Oh, wow, well, come on. Come on. <laughs> but you said yeah. that. <laughs> so do you do you feel? We do, we do say a lot of things, don't we? <laughs> Truth is, you know, um, right now, I'm, I'm going to keep working for now, and, and if these things present themselves to me, I mean, I, I presume you're talking about family or something along those lines. No, oh, I, I would never, not, right? No, no, never, no. I'm just saying in general. But since you brought that up, no, 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 no. The truth is, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm in right now. I don't want to look back at this time and say I didn't take advantage of that. And if other stuff, you know, happens to come along in a natural progression, so be it. So be it. Well, you have done this a Thank time you or two, very much. but I really wasn't trying to go there. I just it's remember when it's you were, <laughs> were with Oprah and you said that about uh, that, that special age. And finally, as we go away, thank you for what you're doing in Haiti. Um, you oh, stepped up you. well before a lot of people gave a million dollars of your of your own money. You were part of the telethon as well. What was it about what's gone on there that's really struck a chord with you? It, it, I mean, seeing the footage, really, I mean, like like most people, honestly, uh, this w is one of the biggest disasters in, in my memory, possibly in my lifetime. And to see a country like Haiti that has suffered for so long and has gotten very little help for, for many, many years, and then to have something this devastating happen to them, I mean, the footage of the, the entire place being flattened and children... Uh, obviously that have been uh, killed and, and, and wounded, you know. I, I'm, I'm actually proud to see the outpouring from the United States because I, I think we really stepped up to the plate in this. I mean, even mm -hmm. though we're suffering economically to see people and listen to people on the phone during that telethon say, you know what, I can't give much, but I'm going to do this. I'm glad. I, I feel good to be able to give right now. And, and I don't know, it made me feel a little proud to be American that day. Uh. I really did. It's a perfect way to end it. Leo, as advertised, wonderful to meet you. And it really is a powerful, powerful role for you. And I, and I know that you are going to have continued success in all that you do. And people are going Thank to look you. back at this interview and say, okay, 10 years ago is from now. So when you're 45, they're going to ask you the same question. But as long as I have another 10 years. <laughs> at least. Thanks so much.